Giara. Salam. Namaste. Hola. Ciao. Kumbanwa. Marhaba. Jumbo. Nihawa. Welcome to the 2017 World Forum. Well, here we are together again. 700 early childhood professionals from 67 countries coming together to celebrate peace, love, and chocolate fish. Brace yourself for the quickest week of your life. You'll wake up tomorrow, and it will be Friday, as we're all gathering for one ginormous group hug. The three questions I am most frequently asked about the World Forum are, where is the next World Forum going to be? What is the purpose of the World Forum, and how did it get started? I'm going to answer two of those questions tonight, and one of them at the annual meeting on Thursday. Ah, oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> 48 years ago, Bonnie and I got married in Fargo, North Dakota. Included in the vows we wrote for the ceremony was the commitment that we would work together to make a difference in the world. Three years later, we quit our jobs Bonnie was a high school teacher, and I worked for the federal government in urban development, and spent a year touring Europe on $5 a day. We got by with one change of clothes and one cassette tape. <laughs> Tapestry by Carol King, which we, listen, <laughs> which we listen to for every, every night, and still like. We came home penniless, homeless, jobless, and pregnant. But we were inspired by our plan to fulfill our vow. We were going to work together to change the world by starting a child care center. Bonnie got the ball rolling by starting Beginnings Nursery School. After a while, she accepted me as an approved assistant, <laughs> but fired me a month later. <laughs> I would get the kids all fired up and then leave the Bonnie, Bonnie with the wild bunch. <laughs> Meanwhile, I enrolled at Leslie College in a master's in early childhood education program. I quickly discovered that while there's lots of information at that time, this was in the dark ages, there was plenty of information about curriculum, but there was nothing about how to manage and start and manage a child care center. So with help of my advisor, Gwen Morgan, we recruited two of the best center directors in each of the 50 states in the United States. Every few months, I would send a questionnaire to this panel of 100 about specific issues in managing childcare programs, staff motivation, fundraising, marketing, etc. Then I would compile these responses into a little newsletter, Childcare Information Exchange, that I sent back to the 100 collaborators. Then one day a friend of mine said, well, why don't you sell subscriptions to this? Eventually I came around to his point of view. I was back working at the federal government at that time, and Bonnie and I decided that we would take four years to carefully and safely roll out this new magazine. Then one day, shortly thereafter, I had a fight with my boss, and I quit on the spot. Walking home from work that day was the longest walk of my life as I was trying to figure out how to explain to Bonnie what I had just done. <laughs> but in, in retrospect, my having quit was the best thing that could have happened because it forced us to aggressively move forward with marketing the magazine. And six months later, we were magazine publishers. As Exchange was one of the few resources out there at the time for center directors and managers, we were invited to give presentations in all of the 50 states and eventually in many countries in Europe, Asia, and the Pacific. From having the opportunity to meet with early childhood directors and professionals from around the world, we came to appreciate that early childhood professionals everywhere are highly committed, extremely creative, poorly paid, and very isolated. So we wondered if there would be a way to connect all these grassroots experts 
so they could benefit from each other's knowledge and each other's ideas and each other's perspectives, just like the exchange panel of 100 inspired each other. So lo and behold, in 1988, meeting at a pub in Manly Beach, Australia, with Carmel and Rodney Kenner from Patty Mellon Press, we decided to launch a global conference for early childhood professionals. Over the next 12 months, we called everyone we knew to spread the word about this coming event in Honolulu, Hawaii. Keep in mind, this was before the age of, before Google, Twitter, Facebook ruled the world. So all our communication was done by mail, fax, phone, primitive email, and word of mouth. And finally, in May of 1999, 525 adventurous early childhood professionals from 56, 36 nations gathered at the Sheraton Hotel in Honolulu, Hawaii for the first ever World Forum on Early Care and Education. The first person we encountered when we got to the conference was Barnabas Sotala from Namibia, who exclaimed, Madam Boney, this is where the rubber hits the road. <laughs> and indeed, we were up and running. At the, when the, Bonnie and I were leaving at the end of the conference, leaving the hotel at the end of the conference, we saw a group of five delegates from Malaysia, South Africa, India, England, and the United States heading out together to snorkel. Right then we knew that the idea of connecting people from around the world was a great idea. So as the World Forum has evolved over the past two decades, it is, development has been guided by four principles. Principle one, everyone is equal. A typical conference is divided into two classes of participants. You have the celebrated experts, the stars, who possess all the knowledge, and then there are the spectators who are there to soak up all this knowledge. Ten years ago, I attended the Clinton Global Initiative in New York City, which was an interesting example of the former. The, on the stage, there were people like Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, President Obama, and many movie stars and Nobel laureates. And then in front of the stage, there were tables with linen set out for Nobel laureates, heads of nations, movie stars, etc. And then behind them there was a, uh, a, a gate and it protected them and then the rest of us sat in metal chairs. Well, I'm not Bill Clinton and the World Forum doesn't work that way. We built Exchange Magazine on the belief that real experts are the people doing the work. Now, with the World Forum, we operate with the same grassroots philosophy. We believe that everyone participating in the World Forum activities is equally important. Everyone has something of value to share and something of value to learn. Principle two, the World Forum has a unique structure. It is a gigantic global initiative dri driven by volunteers. So I'd like you to stand up if you're a presenter or moderator at this World Forum. Okay. Keep standing. Stand up if you were presented or moderated at a past World Forum. Stand up if you're a World Forum board member. If you are a national representative, stand up. If you are a global leader, if you're a member of the World Forum International Advisory Group, if stand up if you're on a team of a working group. If you're a member of one of our administrative partners, NZTC, Dimensions, Community Playthings, Lakeshore, Exchange, or CDI, stand up if you're a sponsor of the World Forum. All of you are invaluable volunteers. All of you make the World Forum work. Give your hand, self a hand and sit down. <laughs> Every year, you and others who can't be here today contribute nearly 15,000 hours of your valuable time to make the World Forum work. 15,000 volunteer hours every year. Without you, the World Forum would never work. The World Forum would not exist. Principle number three, we believe in bottom-up leadership. 
19 years ago when we founded the World Forum, we had no master plan, we had no hidden agenda, we had no educational philosophy to promote, we had no idea what would happen next. We had faith that when people came together, they would guide us. At the first World Forum in Hawaii, you told us, this is a good idea, let's do it again. So in 2000, we had a, the next World Forum in Singapore. At the World Forum in Singapore, teacher educators told us they needed to get together. So we had a teacher educators working forum in New Zealand. At a session about connecting children with nature in Montreal World Forum, participation, participants created the Nature Action Collaborative for Children. At the World Forum in Athens, early childhood professionals working in conflict situations organized a peace building group for young children. At the World Forum in Acapulco, the need to support emerging leaders in our profession came to the surface and working with Joan Lombardi, we launched the Global Leaders for Young Children. Over and over, and over this cycle has been repeated. With people connecting and creating global initiatives and this has been repeated. As a result, we now have 11 active working groups plus our ongoing Global Leaders Program. With all this activity since 1999, the World Forum Foundation has held over 50 events in 34 countries. We have had events in 12 countries in Eastern and Western Europe, seven countries in Africa and the Middle East, nine countries in Asia and the Pacific, and six countries in South and North America. Principle number four, we believe that relationships are the key to making change happen in the world. Over 10,000 early childhood professionals from 151 nations have participated in World Forum activities. 10,000 people from 151 nations. That makes for a lot of global connections, a lot of potential relationships. But why do those connections matter? Why do we go to all this trouble just to connect people? We, if, we worked, if you worked in a childcare center in Bangalore and came to the World Forum where you got to know people caring for young children from Addis Ababa, Buenos Aires, and Dublin, Suddenly, the perspective on your profession has expanded well beyond your center. You now view your peers in other countries not just as strangers of little interest, but as people you care about. When an earthquake strikes in Nepal, a gas attack occurs in Syria, or police attack protesters in Moscow, you worry about your friends there, and you reach out to them by email and Facebook. When Germany won the World Cup, and Obama won the presidential election, you were happy and you congratulated your new friends in those countries. Being connected with peers around the world matters. It inspires you to encourage children you care for to see differences as healthy, not as dangerous. Being connected empowers you to want to make a difference for children throughout your country, throughout your region, throughout the world. But being a global citizen is not easy. Increasingly, increasingly, there are world leaders who are creating a climate of fear, distrust, and hatred. We cannot be discouraged by this. We cannot allow the bullies of the world to destroy all the good that we are trying to do for children. So starting at this very moment, I want you to, suspense, <laughs> say yes to trust, say yes to friendship, say yes to relationships. As I always do, I'm challenging at this World Forum to make 10 new friends for life by Friday. And it's easy. The World Forum has been scientifically engineered to make it easy to make gobs of new friends. So here's Roger's top 10 opportunities to make new friends. Well, immediately after Bonnie's remarks, we'll head to the Auckland Ballroom one floor down for a gala welcoming reception with millions of opportunities to mingle and schmooze.
When you registered, you were given seven identical pieces of a 10 gram. Now you have to find six people to trade with to complete your set. A perfect excuse to strike up conversations and make friends. However, a warning. This isn't a contest. There's not an award for the person who gets the seven right first. <laughs> Don't rush around with, like a chicken with your head cut off trying to try find the other six pieces. You need to do it slowly to talk to people to make friends. You have 72 hours to do this, so take your time. <laughs> Next, spend some time on the block playground. Play in the block playground, playing with community playthings, building blocks. Being playful is always a good way to make friends. Seven, take advantage of the supersized 45-minute refreshment breaks to make new friends. People always ask, why are the breaks so long? Well, they're intentionally that long because people love to talk to each other during breaks. So let's do it. Five, chat with delegates as you make memory book, a memory book in the Lakeshore community room in the Parnell room on level four. The conversations that take place there as you're working on your book are very relaxed and easy and, and really make a difference. Four, make a re reservation and share your stories in Bonnie's Global Cafe in a promenade on level five. Three, when you make a comment or a in a workshop, ask a question in a workshop, be sure to hold up your name card so that everybody in the room can see your name and connect with you later. Two, attend the annual meeting of the World Forum in this very ballroom on Thursday evening. I know the idea of an annual ballroom is really a snoozer, but I guarantee you it'll be a great experience. You'll learn more about the leadership of the World Forum. You'll learn where the next World Forum will be. Ask your quit. yeah, wait. <laughs> Ask your questions about the World Forum and share your ideas about what we should be doing. And most importantly, number one, almost always the high point of the World Forum is the international dance that I plan. <laughs> You'll have the opportunity to stretch your stuff to f music, rock, hot rock music from 42 countries. As Dorindra Lamsell once remarked, you don't stop dancing because you get old, you get old because you stop dancing. <laughs> so see you on the dance floor. Thank you very much.